But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. I'd like to share with you a thought today. Where is the fire? Where is the fire? God said it would come. God said we would have it. These are the words of John the Baptist. And we find similar words recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke. Chapter 3, verse 16. They are almost identical. So I'm asking you today the question, where is the fire? John told us by his own admission that he was indeed baptizing up with water. But he spoke about one who would come after him, who was mightier than he. And he said, whose shoes I am unworthy to unloose. He said, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. We have to ask the question today, where is the fire. Come on. Yeah, come on, bitch. Where is the fire? <coughs> fire is necessary. Fire is needed. And if you're going to have any type of relationship with Jesus Christ, ask him for the fire too. Amen. Amen. Because without the fire, you will grow cold. Amen. You will never enjoy your life. I'm so grateful for one of our, my young sons in the gospel. He was on his job, reading his Bible, and started weeping and crying. Called me on the phone and said, Pastor, I've been crying all day and, and been reading my Bible. He said, I want to come back. I'm ready to come back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Gotcha. And just the fire from him desiring to come back to the Lord, he started reaching out to all of his friends, and many of them are here today. Oh, you can tell it only take a spark to get a fire going. And then soon all of us around can warm up to his glowing. That's how it is with God's love. When you have God and you have the fire, you recognize that in him we live and we move and we have our being. You can't live without God. Amen. And the Bible says that he is before all things and by him all things consist. God is before everything. He recognized that this week. And not only did he recognize that, but he also recognized that he don't belong to himself. Amen. For Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not I that live, but it's Christ who's in me. When you recognize that it's not about you, you're going to be a different kind of a saint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire is necessary, though. Believers need fire. One passage of scripture in the book of Proverbs, chapter 26 and verse 20, says it this way. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. That's a fact. Where there is no wood, the fire goes out. And oftentimes when the fire is out, people grow cold. People grow cold. Mm, there's a draft in here. <laughs> Amen. Ask your neighbor, is that breeze coming from you? They don't have the fire no more. They've gotten cold. And the Bible says, 
and for the love of many. It comes because of iniquity, though, now. The Bible says, and because of iniquity shall abound. Ask somebody how you're living. The love of many shall wax cold. When people get cold, they don't love no more. They don't love them no more. They don't treat people like they used to treat them. Boy, when that fire came on, he was witnessing, talking to everybody. You can tell when you got some. And you can tell when you don't. The Bible says that the axe would be laid at the root. And the Bible talked about those that did not produce fruit. Without the root, you can't produce no fruit. I'm talking about the root of Jesse. I'm talking about the seed of Abraham. I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about you must be tied up and tangled up in Jesus in order to produce. And fire consumes. Fire changes things. Ask anybody in here that's ever got burnt before. Amen. Fire will change your mind. It'll also change your appearance too. Hallelujah. Some of you all might remember when Moses was out there in the wilderness. He saw a bush that was burning. And the, and the Bible says the bush was burning, but it was not consumed. You see, sometimes when God allows fire to change something, it doesn't reduce everything to his lowest molecular structure. Sometimes God leaves something. He leaves a little something. But he, fire takes away the things that need to be taken away. Amen. Somebody ought to thank God for the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire purifies. Yes, The Bible says in, in Proverbs 25 and 4, take away the drunks from the silver. Anybody got silver wrong? That silver had to be subjected to fire. And the impurities of that silver came out so you can have on whatever you have on and it not turn green. <laughs> hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. God uses fire too. When he baptized you. <clears throat> the Bible says he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And a mighty burning fire. Fire. It refines. According to the scriptures, yes. fire refines. One one person called it in Malachi three and two the refiner's fire. That's right. This is God's fire. It's what He uses to purify you. You you say you can't put that man down. Y'all right. ain't helping me. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah 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 yeah. It got real quiet in here. I must be a, a main artery or something. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You, you say you can't put them smokes down. Oh, amen. 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 You, you can't put them women down. You can't put that, that crack down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, man. But, but, but God is a refiner's fire. He knows how to get the junk out of your baby. Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Fire not only is a refiner, fire purifies. Fire is purifies. And, and Israel had all of those archaic religious practices, religual, ritual. And, 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 and it became such that they had a form of God, but they were denying the power thereof. They look religious. People look religious. People look religious. They think, you know, what they got on right. make them saved. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it might make you look saved, right. but you got to have a little bit more 
You get some clothes and shoes and you won't be saved. You need an inside job. Israel had a form of God. All those robes and all of the stuff that they were had on, the, the ornaments, the hats, the, and, 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 and and, and we can see here, they had a form of God, but they were denying the power thereof. Some people today are like that too. They got a form of God. Anybody can play save for two hours on Sunday morning. Amen. But, but wait till they get midnight. When there's a full moon. <laughs> hey, when those hormones start raging, y'all ain't helping me today. Hallelujah. I'm going to see how saved you are then. Amen. I'm going to see, I'm going to see, I'm going to see. So, uh, we have to be more than just religious. Because religion does not save. Jesus saved. He saved from to the utmost. He saved from the guttermost to the utmost. Can I get a witness of this? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I was sinking deep in sin. I was far from the peaceful shore. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And from the waters lifted me. Now save am I. You got to be more than just religious. Hey. If you live, sleep in a garage, will that make you a car? If you go down to McDonald's and you stay all night in there, will that make you a, a bird? <laughs> See, you just can't join in. You've got to be born in. You have to be born of the water and the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the first time when I was born, they wrote my name and put it on a civil register and sent it to Jacksonville, Florida, to the Bureau of Vital Statistics. But when I got born from above, he wrote my name in the Lamb Book of Life. You must be born again. And today, we have a lot of educated people. I thank God for you and your education. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people got more degrees than a thermometer, but don't have no common sense. Dr. Rutland, the president of Southeastern University, told me, he said, Bishop Foran, some people couldn't find their own behind with both, with both hands, with two hands. He was showing you how much education some people got, but they don't have any common sense. One man who was a grandpa. He had saved his life earning to send his grandson to college. And when he came home from college, he took him camping. And um, as they were bedding down in the tent, they both fell asleep. And when the grandpa woke up the next morning, he said, grandson, what do you see? Grandson woke up. He said, astrologically, there are many stars, Milky Way, in the universe. Bibliologically, even the heavens declare the glory of God. He said, Grandpa, what do you, you see? He said, somebody done stole our tent. <laughs> Some people got so much education, they can't see God. They can't feel God. They can't experience God. They can't trust God. They have become an educated fool. Claiming to be wise, they have become fools. They have become fools. The Bible says it this way, ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Something is wrong with that. That's why you need to be praying, Lord, send the fire. I need the fire. Fire changes things. Fire will make you live right. Fire will make you do right. 
I'm talking about Holy Ghost fire. Amen. Because some things you can't do on your own. That's why it takes the Holy Ghost. And fire. Some things you can't do on your own. You keep struggling with it over and over again. But that's the need for the Holy Ghost. And the fire. The Bible says, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Amen. They didn't want to put the Ethiopian on there. They put the leopard on there. Our leopard his spots. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's some things you can't change. But tell somebody God can. God can. Now ask the Lord. Say, Lord, send the fire. Yeah. Send the fire. Yeah. We need the fire. We need the fire. We need the fire. Yeah. Yeah. We need the fire. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And I declare before God, if somebody smells smoke, <laughs> you all would be in trouble. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fire changes everything. Yes. Somebody sung the song, Change Me, O God. Yes. Yes. That's what He came to do. Yes. That's what the Holy Spirit came to do. That's what the Comforter came to do. Fire, fire changes everything. And when He gives you the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is your helper. According to John 16 and 7, the Holy Ghost convicts, according to John 16, 13. I wish I had time, but know this. The Holy Ghost is an eternal spirit. It don't stay with you just for a little while, but it'll be with you always. The, it is called also the Spirit of the Lord. It's God's Spirit, according to Acts 5 and 9. It is the Comforter. The paraclete, he knows how to, to, to comfort you, amen, to counsel you, John 14, 16, amen. It's the spirit of counsel, Isaiah 11, 2. Wish I had time, but I just want to say to you today, what are you waiting on? Arise and be baptized, yes. calling on the name of the Lord. Yes. Who will refuse a God like this? The Bible says, how shall you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? Oh, when I heard the word, I started running. My God, hallelujah. I couldn't sit still any longer. It was time for me to make a decision. That decision that I made came with fire. I still have that desire. Anybody still got the desire? Anybody still love God? Love his people? Still working for him? Please, don't lose the fire. Don't lose the fire. All over the building, would you stand?